Grocery cost varies for different families, but a researcher wants to study the weekly cost of groceries for typical Florida families at four different grocery chains in South Florida. To do this, the researcher looks at weekly costs for groceries at the four stores for four different families. Each family will visit a different one of the four stores to shop each week for a month. The families will randomly be assigned to the stores each week. Use the resulting data below, the Friedman FR test, and a 2.5 significance level to test the claim that the four stores have different average grocery prices. So again, we're using the Friedman FR test and we want to look at the different average grocery prices. Of course, if we're using the Friedman FR test, it won't be average, but it'll be the median grocery prices for the different stores. And we're going to be using a 2.5 significance level to test the claim that they have different uh, median grocery prices. All right, so let's express that claim first. The first thing we're going to do is to write that out in words. And of course, in this case, the claim is basically saying the same as HA would say, right? The claim is saying that at least one store has significantly different prices from the other stores, right? And then HO says that essentially that the median prices for the group different stores and the stores, there's four different stores, and if you look at the stores that they have listed here, the chains are Publix, Target, Costco, and Whole Foods. So let's say median for Publix is equal to the median prices at Target, is equal to the median prices at Costco, is equal to the median prices at Whole Foods, right? And HA would be the idea that at least one differs significantly. So at least one store, differs significantly. Okay, significantly from the others. All right, so that's the same as our claim, basically. All right, from there, well, let's write down our alpha value. Our alpha is 2.5% or 0 0.025. We'll need that later, so let's write that down now. And then, of course, we want to rank the data, rank the data within the blocks, right? Within the blocks. Then total, of course, then total the treatments ranks. Okay, so for each treatment, we're going to total its ranks when we're done doing that. All right, so let's do that ranking procedure. It's really simple to do it. All we have to do is go across through the different blocks and rank the um, different values that we see across the blocks. So the blocks here are going to be these four families, right? There are four different families that we sent to the stores to do their shopping. And essentially their results are going to be set up as the blocks because we know the families will have different grocery prices. We don't care about that. We care just like, in other words, whether the stores are more expensive for each family to go to. We don't care that of course, from family to family, there'll be different prices because obviously there might be more kids or different eating habits, etc. But what we care more about is that they're going to be a different prices for the family. So for example, will family one routinely spend more money at Whole Foods? Will family two routinely spend more money at Whole Foods? So on and so forth, right? We're trying to see if one or two of the stores stand out or something like that, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the row here. So one by one, we're going to rank the values in the row from the cheapest to the most expensive. So we'll say this is the number one. It's the cheapest in this row. Then this would be number two. This is number three. And this is number four. Okay, then we go down to the next line, and we'll have cheapest, right? Next cheapest, next cheapest, and then the most expensive, four here. And then we'll have, let's see, one, right? Two, three, four. And then again, one more time, it's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so again, we rank them in order, ranking them from smallest to largest. Now we're gonna get the totals for the different groups. So the rank total for Publix will turn out to be uh, three, six, nine, 10, 11, right? Then this will be just four. The rank total for Target is only four. The rank total for Costco is gonna be two, four, six, nine. And then we'll have uh, four, eight, 12, 16 for Whole Foods. Okay, so those are the rank totals, and that's what we need to come up with our test statistic, right? 
So when we do our test statistic, remember that what we're looking at here is this formula. We have the formula FR is equal to 12 over BK times K plus 1. Remember K is your number of treatments, B is your number of blocks, times the summation of the RJs squared, the ring total squared. That'll go from J equals 1 to K, the number of uh, treatments you have, minus 3 times B times K plus 1, right? All right, so let's see what our test stat turns out to be then based on that result. So plug in the numbers you have. So we're going to have here uh, 12 divided by the number of blocks. The number of blocks here is 4 times the number of treatments, which is also 4, times the treatment total plus 1, which is 5. All right, and then from there, it'll be multiplied by 11 squared plus 4 squared plus 9 squared plus 16 squared minus 3 times the number of blocks, which is going to be 4, times the number of treatments plus 1, which will be 5. All right, let's work out our test stat and see what it turns out to be then for this problem. Okay, so we will have 12 divided by parenthesis 4 times 4 times 5. Close that up. Times, open parenthesis 11 squared plus 4 squared plus 9 squared plus 16 squared. Close up your parenthesis, minus 3 times 4 times 5. When we do that, we get 11.1 .1 as our solution, 11.1. .1. So that is our test statistic, 11.1. .1. All right, now that we have our test statistic, let's get another sheet of paper out so we can draw our critical region and see if that test stat forms or falls into our critical region. Okay, so let's look at our critical region. It's going to have a chi-squared distribution, right? So the chi-squared curve we'll draw above for a visual aid, right? We'll shade this tail to indicate where the rejection region would be along this number line, right? Now let's try to figure out where that rejection region begins along the number line by identifying the chi-squared value that's associated with that. So it has alpha significance level and k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So in our case, for this problem, it's specifically 0 0.025 alpha and the k minus 1 degrees of freedom, since there are four treatments, will just be Three. All right, let's go to our chart then, look up 0 0.025 with three degrees of freedom and see what critical value we find. Okay, so we're on the chi-squared table looking up 0 0.025 down to three degrees of freedom. We find the answer 9.34840. Okay, so we find the value 9.348. 3.48 for our critical value. Now our test stat, our FR test stat is 11.1 .1, and that's clearly in the rejection region, right? So that means that we will conclude that we should reject HO and therefore support HA. From there when you look at your claim you see that it says at least one store has a significantly different prices, right? At least one store has significantly different prices is the same as HA. So we're going to go ahead and word our answer with regards to that. So we're going to say the sample data supports the claim, right? The sample data, the sample data supports the claim that at least one store differs from the others significantly in median price. Okay, so the idea is that one store, at least one store, is more expensive than the others, right? All right, now uh, one thing we want to talk about here, or at least one store is less expensive than the others. Either way, the idea is that at least one store differs from the rest. One thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that we were able to reject the null hypothesis here. Let's remember that this is a non-parametric procedure. It's considered to be a weak procedure. And if you're able to reject HO, though, you don't have to worry about whether it's weak or not, because essentially when we say that a procedure is weak or it has low power or less power than another procedure, what we're saying is that it has a harder time rejecting the null hypothesis than, say, a more powerful procedure would. So the fact that we're able to reject the null hypothesis 
um, it means that we don't have to worry about that. That's not a concern for us. If our test was able to accomplish the task of rejecting the null hypothesis, then our test is plenty strong enough for what we needed it for. 